Hi, I'm Luigi Finesti Sordida, founding secretary and sole member of the Urbane Society of Skeptical Romantics. That's the USSR, of course. I'm here to talk skeptically about religion, and today I want to comment on this book, Believers by Paul Collins, published in 2008. Collins is a progressive, liberal, Vatican II Catholic, who's been writing and commenting on Catholicism in Australia for many years now. Believers deals with the challenges Catholicism faces here in the future, with an ageing, overworked priesthood, an intransigent hierarchy, and a growing reluctance to choose priesthood as a vocation. And of course, there are the big issues, homosexuality, the role of women, celibacy and sexual abuse. All issues having something to do with sex, funnily enough. The picture is kind of depressing if you're a Catholic, which happily I'm not. So I feel I'm witnessing the flailing of a beleaguered enemy. But that's not my concern here. Instead, I'm trying. I'm going to single out the only passage in the book where Collins has a go at the so-called New Atheism. And this represents another kind of flailing. It's inevitable, of course, that... Uh, New Atheism, you get a Guernsey in the book. And it was also pretty inevitable that the author would fail to rise to the challenge. But even so, here's the passage. One of the focal sources of modern angst is the attempt to live without any sense of God or the transcendent, without faith in anything. This has become particularly virulent with the recent publication of Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens' tomes attacking all forms of religious belief. These authors actively oppose God and set out to explain reality as the product of evolution without any sense of transcendence or spirituality. In the process, they cut off any possibility of hope and creativity for a better world. Modern anxiety constitutes one of the basic ministerial challenges for Catholicism to offer a sense of, God, of trust in God to the wider world. Now, if you didn't get all that, I've broken it down to four main points. One, with no sense of God or the transcendent, you'll have no faith in anything. Two, new atheists generally believe that reality is the product, product of evolution, with no transcendence or spirituality. Three, atheism cuts off any possibility of hope and creativity for a better world. Four, modern angst or anxiety is the product of or deeply associated with atheism. The first point is entirely dependent on how you define faith. If you take Sam Harris's definition that faith is belief in things for which there can be no evidence, then yes, atheists don't want to have anything to do with faith. But if you use the more general sense, such as having faith in the healing power of love, having faith in the future of humanity or in your local football team, then of course atheists have just as much faith as anyone else. Collins here uses the age-old and transparent rhetorical device of slipping from one meaning of faith to another, and so trying to paint all atheists as a bunch of nihilists. Check. The second point. Atheists take reality to be the product of evolution. What the? Presumably, presumably by evolution, Collins is talking about the theory of Darwin and Wallace, which was never intended to explain reality. It was only intended to explain the diversity of species on our little bitty planet. I mean, what was he thinking? Again though, Collins brings in the lack of transcendence and spirituality as a fault. But you know, religious people don't believe in such vague things as transcendence and spirituality per se. They believe in particular deities and spirits and the, so and the stories associated with them. Ancestor spirits, dreamtime stories, the great battle between Brahma and Vishnu, the merciful Osiris, Lord of the Dead, etc, etc. The Catholics have their set of stories too. Their creator of the universe revealed himself for some reason to the so-called tribes of Israel a few thousand years ago, helping them to the promised land, slaughtering their enemies, and occasionally blasting them for worshipping other gods. And then, according to some, causing his son to be born in the same region, out of a virgin, and then to be crucified while still a young man, apparently for our sins. If you don't understand that last bit, ask your local Catholic priest. 
Catholics also believe that God is one but somehow comes in three forms. The Father, the Son and another entity called the Holy Spirit. Again, ask your local priest for details. They also believe that if you go to a sacred place called a church and you eat a wafer and drink some red wine, especially blessed by a priest, then you physically partake of the body and the blood of the crucified Son, which have disinfectant properties which help to cleanse you of sin. Now this all sounds eminently reasonable and beyond the need for evidence, but atheists do tend to go in for evidence, testability and coherence in what they choose to believe. Otherwise, you can let anything in. Check. The third point. Atheism cuts off hope and creativity for a better world. But you know, it could be argued that the West is becoming better through leaving Catholicism and religion generally behind. Think of three attitudes that have improved over the past 150 years with little or no help from Catholicism. The attitude of the white majority to the black minority, the attitude of men to women, and the general public's attitude to homosexuality. Today we have a black US president, unthinkable 150 years ago, when even the most liberal white folks were calling blacks savages. 150 years ago, women were barred from universities and most professions, their role in society was highly circumscribed, and it was habitual for male intellectuals to call them childlike, emotionally shallow, intellectually weak. And as for homosexuals, the way they were treated 150 years ago hardly bears thinking about. The hierarchy of the Catholic Church is now about the only Western institution that still wages war against the sin of homosexuality. If you really want a better world, forget Catholicism. But maybe Collins is talking about hope and creativity for a better world beyond this one. Well, hope maybe, but creativity, no. All you have to do is believe and wait. And don't sin too much. In the Bible, God's Word, there isn't much talk of creativity. Obedience, yes, being God's servant, but not creativity. Check. The fourth point is that atheism creates or is the product of angst. This is perhaps the most alarming claim in the passage, but also the most absurd. If you look at the New Atheists and their arguments, you'll find little there in the way of anxiety. These are high-achieving, confident types who speak and write with a resounding sense of urgency. I think they do so because they know they have the backing of an increasingly vocal, non-believing community in the West, a community ever more concerned about their belief in an absolute, transcendent authority which necessarily speaks with a human voice, is leading people. Collins has hugely underestimated the challenge of atheism with his remarks about modern angst. He's also being incredibly arrogant and condescending, condescending essentially asserting that if you're a non-believer, that if you reject these just-so stories with, which um, lack evidence, coherence and testability, then you must have emotional or psychological problems. The role call of modern rejectors of personal gods and the myths surrounding them is quite illustrious. I won't name names, but we're talking about the most significant contributors to human knowledge and understanding over the last century. The challenge that the Catholic Church faces in the West isn't modern angst, it's relevance. Faced with an education system that encourages analysis and questioning, I doubt that the Catholic Church can reform enough to halt the decline of its influence. Not with a bang, but a whimper. Well, and I do believe that's checkmate. So it's Luigi here, smirking off into the sunset. Goodbye from the USSR, with love. And I hope you'll join me again when I talk about Charles Taylor and the Atheist Bus Campaign.